said you want him to defend you in court, you have to sign your publishing to him. So that's what you do. You sign your publishing to the lawyer in a New York. And every tune that I put out, the money for your publishing from that tune go to that lawyer in New York. You know that. So you can come and tell people about I I am a pirate. Right? Rethink all the things where you say. Right? And all you're supposed to have is respect. Because I make you all your first money. Right? You're a fool. And you'll probably be a fool. Because you don't have no sense. You make some guy boost you to come at me. And you can't come at me. Because he's a disciplined person. Born Jamaican. Love Jamaican people. You understand? See, Black Adred you. You will never prosper. <laughs> when your police friend them in a brick stand, but a mash of cash to brown shop them. And the young girl them from Jamaica will come and hustle lad and hope them make a year dressing place and sell them make a ball away. You send your police friend them in a polar ballet, a mash up the girl them shop. Mel and them will rent a shop and your shop. You make police mash up for them shop. Because you send them people that from them come from the corner, them will sell your weed pieces gone down low. That is you, Black and Dread, right? Police never raid your shop yet, but the police raid every other shop around you. So, you think so the people of London, you see what you do. Everybody has see what you do. It's a disgrace, right? Nobody in a London like you, you see? I'm sorry, the only thing I'm sorry for is that I have to make this interview against you because I don't want to hurt your children then because you have some nice children who I respect and love, but you force me to come out to make the center of the audience. You know. So go away and get lost. Today we have a problem in, in England here where we as Rasta come in our community need to solve. The youth and youth them not living good. Every day when your youth go out and you hear some other youth stop some other youth and thing, right? It's because when we were growing up in England here, we did have more love and respect for each other. And we never make that happen, right? So Instead of man and man like me a fight against each other over two records and things. We need to come into the community and try and help the youth them to behave much better so that them don't stab up themselves and things, you know. Because it's not a good thing, you know. You see, all that we have with youth and every day when we hear something else happen on the street, we, we, we are drunk because we don't know if it's our children. You understand? And I hope that my children and all the rest of children them live in peace and harmony and don't live like how some of these boys them I try to live now to fight against against me and fight against him and fight against other. So what? Two record, two regular record, eh? Where our life is much better than that. You understand? Touch both both radigan, predlocks you said that me this radigan. You know this radigan, you know, we tell radigan some truth that it is not Godfather already in England. And, and him vex. Radigan go on like Galpin. Every time he says something about him, him vex. And him vex with this and vex that. Radigan, if you want to live like how we Jamaican live and do the things like what we are doing, you have to get to the, get into the real world, my virtue. We Jamaican, we talk about each other. And we cuss each other. And we do everything. And tomorrow, we're out the street. And we nice see him with so, so get to the program if you want to, to do what we are doing. Sound system in England today. Sound system in England today is not what it used to be. Because the sound man them is not living living right. So we can't get well, you, you can't get to teach the youth them how to come up. When we are playing sound, you know how much people come through Cox and Sound? Nearly one hundred people work through Cox and Sound and leave and gone and do their own thing. You understand? Today you don't have no sound that is motivating the youth. The few sound them that is playing now them don't want to play with the younger sound because them think that they are too big. So the younger sound them can't come up. The younger sound need to play with the bigger sound them so that them can get a footing up on the ladder to say, yeah, them did play with Coxon and do well and start to come up. Instead of that sound man is living bad in England today, they're not living good. Some sound said they're not playing with this and some sound said they're not playing with that. So the whole sound thing gone to nothing in England. Only a few sensible sound you have played in England. You understand? Last week, Friday, Love Injection invited me to come to, to Birmingham to play with them. Him and Qualitex. I play with Love Injection and Qualitex. Nice dance. Although I couldn't live with them because the dance was a special dance. Them brushed me up a little way, but still live to fight another day. But still, they never sound as good as me. But I couldn't 
I couldn't keep up with them. You know what I mean? But that was still fun. So we man, try and start live good and try and help the younger youth them to come up. You understand? Because we need them. Sound system is where bus reggae music in England. It's not radio. It's sound system, bus reggae music in this country. Do you think Shaka is doing anything good for the sound system? Or you just playing on the sound? Well, I tell you the truth. Sound like Shaka, you're not doing nothing for the, for the sound system business. Shaka don't want to play with anyone. I make a statement against Shaka a couple years ago and everybody begs. And my statement is, Shaka, you don't make black people eat no food. You don't make black people eat no food. And you must remember, say, it's black and white people support me when we are coming with sound. You are sound like Saxon, nice sound. You are sound like King Tubbies, High Spy. Those are the sound that is playing. Those are the sound, Love Injection from Birmingham, and Love Express. Them sound is the sound that's coming up and playing and doing good. See? Shaka not doing nothing for the community. Because they don't make black people eat no food for the last 30 years. Right? That just certain people want to eat food. And when I talk so people fix. But check out what I say for the truth. Right? I have no malicious feelings against no sound man. But me is a man people know that me name Lady Cast and me afraid to talk. I can come out and talk any day. Me a 70 years. Me now look no more sound system glory. I have that already. But I will always speak out against things that are seen that right in the business. And that's me. Why not? Yes. And that was Sir Lloydy Coxon talking about the situation he's had with Fred Lux. Fred Lux is dreadlocks. Alright. Now uh time is moving. What time is it? Oh, 22 minutes to the hours of 11 o'clock. I'm going to be playing my son, Fira Allah, right? Now, Fira Allah, I call him my son, not because he's mine, but because he definitely shines, all right? But he's got on a quest of, of exposing a whole bunch of group of people in, whether it be the Nawapians, the Amon Ra squad, I'm talking about the Metuneta, whether it be Malachi York, as I said, whether it be the noble Drew Ali from the Hebrews or whether it be the nation of Islam Farrakhan and within the last month or so if you go to YouTube and type in Pharaoh Allah Farrakhan you will hear Pharaoh Allah cursing um, Pharaoh Allah be cursing Farrakhan awful some awful now you know my son son he ain't got no government on his mouth right so he's going to be using words like He's an itch ass eager. Farrakhan deserves to die. Farrakhan um, had cancer. And uh, something, he still have cancer, I don't know. I don't know if it's in remission. But he should die from it. And a lot of the people in the, what they, they regard as the conscious community is hitting out against fear of Allah and saying he's not showing no respect for the adults, for the, for the older generation. So when you see some of these commentaries, and I was listening to Sarah's um, Sinet TV the other night, and I don't too fussy over Sinet anyway, but I decided to pass through on his channel, right? And he was saying, oh, how can you disrespect somebody like Farrakhan? Because Farrakhan has been doing so much for the black community over the years. And he's an elder. And you don't talk to an elder like that. So he comes up and says, well, somebody called in and said, well, you know what? They kind of support um, Fira Allah. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sinet, all right? So he decides to go on a rampage saying, oh, if, no, 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 pardon me. Then went on a rampage. He said to the caller, listen, if somebody um, called your mother, you love your mother and you love your father, right? Yeah, I love my mother and I love my father. Damn right. Well, would you like somebody now, because they have a disagreement, to start calling them, they're old, they're decrepit, they're wrinkled, they should die, and all kind of thing, and let them uh, uh, dry up like a leaf and blow in the wind, because they don't serve no purpose. Right, well, obviously, if you're going to come from that perspective, you're going to get only but one answer, right? I love my mums, and I would, like nobody like to, I would like nobody to do that to my mums. True indeed. But that's not the situation here right now i've said to myself listening to this whole thing over the last few weeks fear of allah i'm saying just be mindful son 
I know you got the heart of a liar, but this thing called wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You've got a lot of knowledge, right? You have a lot of understanding to be able to put, um, connect the information to social issues. But what I think you lack is experience, wisdom. And the reason why I said I think you lack wisdom, all right? And you're still young, you're 24, and as I said, you're my son. I call you my son, son, not because you mind, but because you definitely shine like the sun, right? But because you went and exposed um, Malachi York and you cursed him out something awful, right? You turned around and exposed Dr. Mahat. You cursed her out something awful. These are enemies you created. You went to the, Hebr um, uh, the Hebrews and you cursed out Noble Drew Ali. You went to the Moors. You cursed them out. And you don't, when you're talking about cursing, I don't mean to say, ah, they're fools or something like that. No. He be going off the rail. He be talking about their itch ass iggers and they don't serve us no purpose. They're coons. They work for the government and they, they're the worst things that has ever happened to black people. You think that white people was bad? Black people are even worse, all these organizations, because they're leading us down the path and they're itches and they're cowards and they're this and they're that. He's gone on now to Farrakhan. And all I'm saying to you out of all of this is that you're gonna you're creating an atmosphere around you that you don't know where your enemies is coming from. Normally we know where our enemies coming from, like if you're in the underworld, you've done something to somebody or somebody done something to you and you retaliate, you know where it's coming from. But when you go out there and do that, you're gonna create a whole bunch of enemies. But as I said to you before, you've got the heart of a lion, why I can respect certain things that you say, why I call you my son is because uh, the things you said about yourself being on the streets of Buffalo, I can relate to that because of the streets of Brooklyn. When you said you went into Cayuga prison, I was there before you, and you said that Cayuga prison was a rough jail. You are correct. So I can relate to Fira Alab with that. Then he said he got transferred to Wyoming. That's next door to Attica prison, right? Now, he's saying it's a wild jail too, which is true, because I was there too. He also, met, why I can relate to this young man? He's 24, and I hope that when he gets older, he'll have more um, experience or wisdom to be able to have, because he's got a large following. But anyway, let me go back. One of the things he did say, he, when he was in prison, he lived in the law library. Right? When everybody, when they say yard or programs, well, they usually say both of them together. Programs, yard. When a lot of people is going out to play basketball, dominoes, or soccer, he's not doing that. He's going to the law library, right? Which you can be labeled a jailhouse, a jailhouse lawyer. Well, it was the same thing with myself. I wasn't going out there to play dominoes and play basketball or anything, I'm going to the law library. So they end up calling me a jailhouse lawyer, right? So this is the reason why I can relate to Fira Allen certain things he says. Now, a lot of people is in an uproar because he's cursing out Farrakhan, right? And they're saying he's an elder and what he's done. The only thing I know Farrakhan has done for the community in the United States is when the Crips and the Bloods had a problem over there in Los Angeles. He went over there, he got Chuck D, uh, Ice T, who else did he get? Uh, Russell Simmons, and don't quote me, Pete Diddy, but don't quote me on Pete Diddy though. And he was able to go out there and try and use 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 his influence to try and have a peace treaty with the gang members. And apparently, it worked until later on it flared up again. But the point is, he tried. Beside, and also, I gotta give it to him. I've learned a lot of things from him also because he's very articulate. He's a very charismatic individual, right? And if you listen to him, you know he's coming out of the school of Malcolm X, period, right? But people saying don't call him an itch ass igger and don't pray that he dies. Well, you got to look at it from the flip side of the coin. He's saying that Malcolm X is a traitor and Malcolm X we should be punished and who i will play it play a little later on with fear of Allah going into all of that all right and he's saying right that uh malcolm x is a traitor but what was malcolm x a traitor about because he saw something that was corrupt and immoral 
And that part, Farrakhan has not gotten over that hump of why would he say something like that. But remember this, Malcolm had as children, he had a wife, he had a, well, I'm not going to say he had, he still has, because he has, he's gone but he ain't forgotten. Got a wife, got children, got a lot of people that love him. And when Farrakhan is going to call him a traitor, right? And we're not talking about when he was riding Muhammad Speaks. We're talking about in the late, somewhere in the early 90s, when he came out and said, so whose business is it if we do something to him? All right? Now, for, was Farrakhan and his followers worried about how Malcolm X's children felt or the followers of Malcolm X that they was talking about him in that manner, in that tone? Did it matter to you all then? No, but now it matters to you when somebody is going to be talking about Farrakhan in that manner. Anyway, take a listen. Let me see. I'm supposed to have it up on the wheels of steels. It's not on the wheels of steels. Let me see where I could pick this up. That's a two hour video. All right. Well, some to it. And what happened was, during that time, a little bit before, you have Martin Luther, who Martin Luther King Jr. is named after, who started being practitioners of Islam. And so a Shriner uh, Mason basically, during the Holy Crusades, and so if you don't know what the Luciferian doctrine is, long story short, the Luciferian doctrine is basically the belief that um, Lucifer freed humanity from God by influencing Adam and Eve to use their free will to which God was trying to keep them from. And so they believe, you know, this is just a quick rundown. They believe that God is really an evil deity and that Lucifer is angelic and that he's a beholder of light. This is why Lucifer always referred to or depict Satan or the devil as an angel. And so, of course, during the Holy Crusade, the Knights of the Templar couldn't just tell the Catholic Church or the church period that they believe now that God was evil. So they said that this is the origins of the formation of the origins of the formations of secret societies, hence via uh, Freemasons. And so the Knights of Templar is one of the oldest and founding sectors of secret societies. And so that crescent moon and that star is associated with the Baphomet, okay, who was uh, drawn by Eliphaz Levy in the 1700s. And so when you see that crescent moon and that star on the nation of Islam and you see you know Baphomet doing the symbolism and he got the crescent moon in one aspect and the star on his on his head you know we can start to tie these things together now and so the reason that I'm I'm, I'm, I'm making this point is because when you look at the Ku Klux Klan uh, they practice a, Lu a Luciferianism in the sectors of Freemasonry and the original outfit of the uh, Ku Klux Klan was not even wh a white robe it was red black it was, it was a red, white, and black robe, and it had a crescent moon and a star on it. And so with that being said, uh, when they decided that the black community was going to be infiltrated by all of these Freemasonically controlled organizations, they gave that look and that Islam rhetoric to the black community, and there's no other way around that. Uh, but given all of the evidence that we have so far... All right, I'm... I'm going to skip part of it and I'm going to give you part of what, why I said Fira Allah has a right to a certain extent to say what he says. Now, listen to, let me see if I catch it for y'all. And the agenda and the motive, right? I have no doubt in my mind that the Nation of Islam, if not killed Malcolm X, was involved in the murder of Malcolm X. Uh, here's a 1972 audio clip of Louis Farrakhan uh, boasting. Uh, about the death of Malcolm X. You don't jump up and give the divine blessing of God like he did. He has to die. And God is not in you. Now you don't understand. Black Thomas said, Did you want to steal Malcolm? Do you know what you did? He said, What did you do? Now you understand. Have you ever seen his leader scandalized like Malcolm scandalized Muhammad? Have you ever heard of anything like that? Don't you know if you scandalize a man who's loved and honored by the people? What are you asking for? You're asking for 
This was in 1972, not too long after Malcolm X, a couple years later after Malcolm X was assassinated. And Farrakhan is stating that um, uh, what kind of security he had. He was a, they were cowards because they walked straight up in and killed Malcolm. And Malcolm deserves really and truly death because he spoke ill of the messenger. Now, what was he spoke ill about the messenger? Because the messenger was uh, impregnated some teenagers now I can't verify and validate that these were girls under 17 I can't do that I'm gonna go back for the, the audio for Malcolm during the advert and see what part he did say if they were minors or underage teenagers because that makes a lot of difference because if he was under age, if they were underage teenagers then he's a pedophile and there's no way of getting around that if he was messing with girls, because remember teens are 17, 18, 19, depending on what state you're in in the United States, I, it depends on what this consensual age for sex. I believe in the UK, consensual sex with a, a teen is 16 years old, right? However, Elijah Muhammad was preaching monogamy. And if you had broken any kind of rules, you were subject to suspension, you could uh, be suspended for up to a year, depending on what it was, right? So how come the rules apply to all the members, but it never applied to Elijah Muhammad? And that was the problem, right? And because Malcolm X approached him, and Elijah Muhammad said it's ordained for him to have so many females. And then the question really comes about, was Farrakhan part of the hierarchy that I wanted to get rid of Malcolm X because I was listening to an audio soundbite with him up last night, all right, which uh, Ben X put out, and it was about Farrakhan went going to Malcolm X's university in Chicago. Now, I don't know when that was recorded, but by looking at the recording, it looks like it was done in the 80s, right? And he was start saying, you know what, I came here, and he's given Malcolm X accolades in the whole nine yards. And he admitted he set the atmosphere up because he was a publisher or he had something to do with Muhammad Speaks back in the days after Malcolm X had set up that newspaper and Malcolm X was basically kicked to the curb. Farrakhan takes it over and in that newspaper, he sets up the atmosphere where he was saying, uh, Malcolm X, he done a picture of him depicting Malcolm X as a trader with a horn on his head when he said rolling off of a silver platter and they associated him to Benedict Arnold. Now that was inflammatory. Let's forget about the CIA and the FBI. Let's forget about COINTELPRO because we know they was very instrumental in the whole nine yards of causing a rift between uh, what they regarded as black militant movements. Nation of Islam, uh, the Black Panthers, and Ram, and a whole bunch of other ones then, right? Well, anyway, anyway, so Farrakhan, right? saying that yes he's a traitor long story short i'm trying to figure out what was your trade about and i'll listen to this take a listen yeah i love elijah muhammad enough that if you attack him i'll kill you yesterday today and tomorrow and i'm not a killer but neither are you but if somebody attack what you love 
Each one of you in here would become a killer instantaneously. Am I lying? Mother, let somebody look like they're attacking your child. There's a woman who fought a bear because the bear snatched her baby. And she ran the bear down screaming until the bear dropped her baby. Love cast out fear. We don't give a damn about no white man love when you attack what we love. And frankly, it ain't none of your business. What have you got to say about it? Did you teach Malcolm? Did you make Malcolm? Did you clean up Malcolm? Did you put Malcolm out before the world? Was Malcolm your traitor or was he out? And if we dealt with him like a nation deals with a traitor, what the hell business is it of yours? All right, you heard what he said. He's a traitor. And if we deal with a traitor, what business is it of yours? So when Pharaoh Allah is saying that Pharaoh Khan should die, Pharaoh Khan is a, a coon, a house eager, he's an itch and so forth. And a lot of people is upset about him saying that. The flip side of the coin, Pharaoh Khan never had no problem of saying these kind of things. I mean, how do you think Betty Shabazz and the four children, three of them was little girls, that's actually so, was at the order bomb and saw their father gone down. How do you think they feel when they heard Farrakhan talking in this, in this tone? So obviously, you know, what is good for the goose should be good for the gander. If Farrakhan can talk about Malcolm X in that tone, then the children of Malcolm X can talk about Farrakhan in that tone also, without no apologies, period. But. I understand where a lot of people are saying is that the Nation of Islam is bullies. And the Nation of Islam only gunned down or attacked what they believe, well, as not what they believe, but what is black people there. Look at the history, whether it be from Malcolm X to um, Khalid Muhammad. Now, what I'm saying is if Nation of Islam want to join this thing called Scientology, good, that's their business. They want to follow, follow Ron L. Hubbard that's their business. If they want to follow Alistair Crowley, that's their business. If they want to follow Madame Doblansky, that's their business. Alistair Crowley's parents said he was the worst thing ever. Mussolini kicked him out of Italy. And you know Mussolini was a tyrant. But Mussolini said, oh no, we can't deal with this dude here. Eh? Alright? But if that's what the nation of Islam want to do, that's fine on me. Ain't got nothing to do with me. Alright? But let it be, let it be told that they say that Malcolm X was a traitor because he revealed certain things then to the, the public, right? Which, as a moral individual, he had a right to do these things because he's coming from a moral perspective, right? So now the question comes about, do we ostracize Farrakhan? I can't ostracize Farrakhan, although I know, and I'm listening to him what he's talking about now, right? Should he, be, should he be held accountable for certain things that came out of his mouth? Damn right. But at the end of the day, do we kick Farrakhan to the curb? Has Farrakhan brought information to us that was vital throughout the years? I believe so, yes. Has he stood on a platform saying he wanted to look out for the, uh, the exploits or the problem that black people go through being exploited? Yes, I believe he has. But the truth has to be told. And a lot of people in the nation of Islam don't like the, it's like white people. White people want the truth, but they can't take honesty. When you tell them the truth, they get bent out of shape. So Malcolm X is my African shining prince. I was going to look for something where Malcolm X states about Eli. Let me see if I can find it. Hold tight. In the Chicago mouse, the lead, go back down to the street. They knew it. And, uh, I knew nothing about it until 1963 when um, Mr. Muhammad's son, who had been in prison, uh, came out and he, was a, he had been a minister and he was very religious and spiritual. And when he began to hear these rumors around Chicago, he went to one of the sisters and the sister admitted to him that the rumor was true. 
Conservative MPs will start the process of choosing their new leader and the next Prime Minister this morning. The first round of votes by a secret ballot is taking place in the Commons. All ten candidates need the backing of at least 17 Tories to go through to the second. I wrote to Mr. Mohammed and told him about it, and he admitted that he had a knowledge of it, and that uh, he'd given me a religious... From Christianity to Islam, assuming that the nation Islam is telling the truth, and that Wallace Dobb, a.k.a. W.D. Farad, did tell Elijah Muhammad these things, uh, W.D. Farad allegedly disappeared again in 1934 after being told by the uh, Detroit Police Department to leave due to his charlatan ways. And so... Uh, Elijah Muhammad takes on these teachings and he builds up this alleged nation, okay, um, on teachings primarily based off of, you know, anti-white people rhetoric, right? And so, remember, we're in a different time zone now. We're in the 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s. Racial tension is extremely high. Civil rights movement going on. And, you know, black people, have, we have a sensitive spot for, uh, you know, racism at this time. So he's feeding off of the people's pain in order to get his own gain. And so he uh, accompanies a member of his group by the name of Malcolm X. And so Malcolm X is probably the most essential black person to ever live in the world within the last 100 years. And the reason I say that is because Malcolm X showed a uh, damn near extinct level of righteousness that exists in black people that we don't really see too much today. And what I mean by that is Malcolm X became a part of this organization and in doing so, okay, Malcolm X eventually went on to discover that Elijah Muhammad impregnated uh, multiple underage girls, you know, during his time as the leader of the Nation of Islam. So, according to Malcolm X's own words, you know, Elijah Muhammad would get these young girls sent in as so-called secretaries, you know, to work in his establishment. And apparently he was having sex with these young girls. And um, it got so, Malcolm X, you know, also stated, you know, just like everybody else, he didn't want to believe it. But it was confirmed to him not only by uh, Elijah Muhammad's son, but by Elijah Muhammad himself. So, this story was kept among these sisters until 1962. Two of them rebelled uh, against uh, the person who was responsible and began to tell the story all over the city of Chicago. It caused many of the Muslims in the Chicago mosque to leave and go back out in the street. They knew it. And uh, it, well, I knew nothing about it until 1963 when um, Mr. Mohammed's son, who had been in prison, uh, came out and he, was a, he had been a minister and he was very religious and spiritual. And when he began to hear these rumors around Chicago, he went to one of the sisters and the sister admitted to him that the rumor was true. And uh, it was he who first told me about it. And when he told me about it, I, took, I wrote to Mr. Muhammad and told him about it. And he admitted that he had a knowledge of it and that uh, he'd given me a religious explanation that would fit into prophecy and all of that. So I was quiet. And it wasn't until October of uh, 1963 that it came up again. And when it came up again, I realized that the same person who had uh, made these other sisters pregnant was still busy doing the same thing. He hadn't stopped. Two of the sisters had two children by the same man. And one of the two, one of those two sisters was pregnant still, getting ready to have a third child by the same man. Malcolm X said he himself went to the young girl's home, sent the baby, uh, and it was confirmed that Elijah Muhammad was the father of this underage girl's daughter, I mean, excuse me, child, and um, Elijah right now. And so one of the biggest rumors uh, concerning Malcolm X is that he left the nation of Islam. That's not true. Okay, Malcolm X was uh, kicked out of the nation of Islam, uh, you know, via his own words. But actually, uh, despite the fact that I tried to protect the Muslim movement, if you'll notice, they uh, used their newspaper to slander me and to label me as a hypocrite and uh, as a rebel. And Mr. Muhammad himself said that I defected. Well, in reality, I never even left the Muslim movement. They put me out. And they put me out because of what I knew. And what I knew was told to me by Mr. Muhammad's son, uh, Wallace Muhammad himself. They put me out and they put him out. And so Malcolm X uh, says he was kicked out of the nation of Islam for 
this exact reason for finding out that uh, Elijah Muhammad was a pedophile and got multiple teen girls pregnant. And so uh, Malcolm X also stated that, um, you know, these allegations were confirmed to him by Elijah Muhammad's son himself. And so a lot of people going to say, you know, well, why, uh, you know, why Malcolm X didn't say nothing sooner? And Malcolm X said that he felt that the Nation of Islam was, you know, positive. The movement was initially positive uh, in regards to the reformation of the black man in America at that time. And he didn't want, you know, for people to, 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 to leave it when it's giving them, you know, an alternative lifestyle, allegedly that was more positive, you know, at that time. It was known uh, among the Chicago officials that I had a knowledge of this. They become very fearful of me. They became very antagonistic toward me, and they they had, they had to do something to diminish the authority that I had for fear that if this became public knowledge, the followers would leave the Muslim movement and follow me. And it was at that time that they used the statement that I made against President Kennedy as a pretext to cut my authority, and uh, some other things happened that finally brought, uh, produced the split or forced the split. And when I made the split, the only reason that I didn't make this public knowledge was I knew the implications, and I, I felt that if the uh, Muslims who were in the uh, Nation of Islam knew it, that which enabled them to be so strongly religious and uh, exercise moral discipline would be shattered, and it would cause all of them to go right back and start doing the things that they had been doing previously. And so, uh, you know, Malcolm X goes on to then reconfirm uh, how he, you know, became aware of you know this incident involving Elijah Muhammad and uh, his pedophilic ways and he also uh, goes on to tell the story of the six uh, girls that Elijah Muhammad uh, you know allegedly impregnated which later on you know he will go on to say was nine who is the father of all of these various children whom you have enumerated uh, the first one to tell me who the father was was Wallace Muhammad and he told me that the father was Elijah Muhammad himself one of the sisters, took, uh, he went to the home of one of the sisters, and when he walked in the door, she said, I want to let you see something. And she uh, showed him her child. She said, here's your brother. And your that was biblical rhetoric. All right. Coming out, getting ready to come. To reverse this course of violence, but we must <clears throat> do work. We must get out there. We must forge peace. We must stop exterminating one another. We must stop all of this madness because at the end of the day, we, we have only ourselves to blame. We must uh, have a do or die attitude as we were as street warriors to rebuild our culture and to create a new lasting legacy, a legacy of peace. The music you want, the Alright, welcome back on The Rebound. Once again, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, respectively to you. Hold up a minute. Let me just sort this out. One minute. Let's see if I can get it in focus. All right. Once again, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, respectively to each and every one of you. You are in tune to the big, the bad, the bold, the bright one. This is OmegaFMRadio.co.uk. In and around your community, the music you want and the information you need. I'm taking it up to the hours of 12 o'clock. From 12 till 4, you'll have Roots Doctor. We'll give you a little bit of this and a little bit of that. From uh, 4 to 6 in the mix, you will have Miss Smooth. She'll also give you a little bit of this and a little bit of that. From 6 to 8, you'll have Sister Asia and Sister Madonna. They'll give you also give you a little bit of this and a little bit of that. From 8 to 10, you'll have the More to Men with Maury and Company. They'll also give you a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And from 10 till 12, 10 till Chips, you'll have Cleo the Black Swan who will give you different genres of music. Music. So that's the lineup for this morning, this afternoon, this evening, and tonight. And don't forget, Omega stands for Organizing Mothers Eradicate Gun Atrocities. The telephone numbers are 75 39 96 Bingo, you got it, you got it. Facebook, Omega 104.1 FM. Tune in radio, omegafmradio.co.uk. Mix cloud, go to the HTTP bar, that's the one on the top, and put in mixcloud.com forward slash Omega DJs. DJ, not DJs, it's singular, not plural. YouTube, if you want to see some of your favorite presenters. Sorry, I got the mic down, my bad, my bad. All right, so, sorry, let's do this all over again. I made an error, a bubat error at that too. Omega stands for Organizing Mothers Eradicate Gun Atrocities. 
organizing mothers eradicate gun atrocities. Telephone numbers are 075 39 96 81 43. Bingo, you got it, you got it. Facebook, Omega 104.1. Tune in radio. That means if you can't catch us on the FM, which you ain't getting us on the FM right about now, but you can always take us north, south, east, west of the globe if you have the tune in app. And most of you all have a smartphone. Correct? Correct. All right. Uh, turn you down. Hear you echoing. Mixed Cloud, if you want to listen to some of your favorite, uh, some audio sound bites from back in the days, you can go to your HTTP bar, that's the bar on top on your laptop, or your desktop, or your mobile, or whatever you got, and put in mixcloud.com forward slash Omega DJ, right? YouTube, if you want to see some of your favorite presenters, you can go to Omega London TV Presents. And any information you want to send to the big, the bad, the bold, the bright one, you can send it to admin at omegafmradio.co.uk. As I said before, I'm taking it up to the hours of 12 o'clock. From 12 till 4, you'll have Roots Doc, so we'll give you a little bit of this and a little bit of that. From 4 to 6 in the mix, you'll have Miss Smooth. She'll also give you a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And speaking about Mixcloud, why did you do that reconnect? Okay, it's so one of those things. All right, cool. All right. Where am I? Uh, Deadly Headly Medley. He had his nine night on Tuesday. It was a small little gathering where family members and close associates, but it wasn't at somebody's house, so they couldn't have no big thing. But in the next few days, they, he will have his funeral and he will be having the after funeral. I don't know what they call it. What did they say it was called intermittent or something like that? But anyway, that will be taking place, right? So I will give you an update on Headly, deadly, the medley, and what's going on with him, and the funeral, and the nine nights, and things. Also, wanted to give you an update on Neville Black. Now, Neville Black, right, they're celebrating the life of Neville. We would like to invite you to celebrate and remember the life of Mr. Neville Black. His funeral is to be held on the 18th of June, 2019, at Kensal Green Crematorium, Harrow Road. West 10 for R8. <coughs> Pardon me. At 1 30 p.m. The intimate the internment will commence at St. Michael's Hall, Toy Kington, Toy Kington Avenue, Wembley, HA96 SL from 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. So that's Neville Black on the 18th of June. He will be they be crem uh, cremating his body over at Kensal Green Crematorium in Harrow Road, West 10, and the intimate will commence at St. Michael's or Toy Kinton Avenue, Wembley, HA96SL from 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. All right, so I was playing Fear of Allah, and I was, my son, I uh, was talking about uh, cursing him out, cursing out. My son is cursing out um, Farrakhan, awful, but I can't play it. Not right now, because you know we only keep it clean, family oriented. But if you go back to some of Farah Allah's videos and things, he's cursing Farrakhan out like crazy. And a lot of people is objecting to it because they say he has no manners, no respect. And I'm saying, well, okay, if that's the case, then why don't y'all feel the same way when Farrakhan called Malcolm X, a what you call it, a traitor, Benedict Arnold. But anyway, listen to uh, uh, Malcolm X. To and Farrakhan. Uh, saying that he was the modern David. Anybody who knows anything about Islam, you know that Muhammad married Aisha when she was six and had sex with her when she was nine. So pedophilia runs rapid, you know, throughout these religions, in case you didn't know. You know, Virgin Mary was 12, in case you didn't know. She was married to Joseph, he was 94. So, you know, pedophilia is, is nothing new about pedophilia in religion. Hence, look at the Catholic Church. And so, um, you know, Going down the story chronologically, okay, in regards to Malcolm X, we're going to talk about Louis Farrakhan next and how he uh, undermined it. Khalid Muhammad, you know, even wrote a letter to the judge on Khalid Muhammad uh, for allegedly preaching rhetoric that the nation of Islam strongly taught. But staying on Malcolm X, right, because we want to clear up a lot of rumors, right, because I want Malcolm X's story to be told from beyond the grave. I want Malcolm X to live and channel vicariously through me right now. And so one of the biggest rumors uh, concerning Malcolm X is that he left the nation of Islam. That's not true. 
I want to say something real quick. Let's be honest. A lot of people in, in under 35 may not know the full story of Malcolm X. They might have heard and see pictures of what their parents or their grandparents have a picture of Malcolm X in their house, but don't really know the full story. Here comes Fero out as a 24 year old saying he's beating his chest and saying Malcolm X lives through him. He's telling Malcolm X's story. And a lot of people say he don't have the right. And I say, yes, he do. Because we're all children. A lot of us are children of Malcolm X. Black Panthers, um, Huey P. Newton, Elridge Cleveridge, Stokely Carmichael, uh, what's the other one? Uh, Bobby Seals. They were children of Malcolm X. A lot of them, but that was a gang banging that was affiliated to gang that broke away from the nation, uh, from the Black Panthers later on because it was destroyed, was like the Crips, community restoration in progress. They was there for a reason. See what I'm saying? Community restoration in progress to look after the community. And it's all that's coming out of Malcolm X. Right, they were children of Malcolm X, not Elijah Muhammad. Although the message of Elijah Muhammad was being coming through Malcolm X, but remember, Elijah Muhammad wasn't charismatic. If you believe in Moses, Moses wasn't charismatic. Moses couldn't talk for Jack, but his brother Aaron was articulate and he could talk. Right, was well, the same thing with Malcolm X. Right, and remember this: the nation of Islam was around from in after Marcus Garvey because of what it was that when Marcus Garvey put the his organization together right and he was deported it was like a whole bunch of vultures and hyenas starting to look for to make money out of this thing because remember Ma uh, marcus garvey was turning over the money for the benefit of black people them like the seven uh, the black star liners right the rest of them now heard about money wow and they all started coming in and wanted to grab peace elijah muhammad w farad uh, Noble Drew Ali, Father Divine, and you can continue going on. So now, here it goes now that the Nation of Islam, right, is making crazy loot. And here goes later on in time, pardon me because if I'm all over the place, but here comes later on in time a young man called Pharaoh Allah that wants to reveal and tell the world that Malcolm X was not a corrupt person. He didn't want money, like some of the people in the nation of Islam. He didn't want power. He just wanted freedom, justice, and equality. Listen. Founded the nation of Islam, uh, you know, via his own words. But actually, uh, despite the fact that I tried to protect the Muslim movement, if you notice, they uh, use their newspaper to slander me and to labeled me as a hypocrite and uh, as a rebel, and Mr. Muhammad himself said that I defected. Well, in reality, I never even left the Muslim movement. They put me out, and they put me out because of what I knew, and what I knew was told to me by Mr. Muhammad's son, uh, Wallace Muhammad himself. They put me out, and they put him out. And so Malcolm X uh, says he was kicked out of the nation of Islam for this exact reason, for finding out that uh elijah muhammad was a pedophile and got multiple teen girls pregnant and so uh malcolm x also stated that um you know these allegations were confirmed to him by elijah muhammad's son himself and so a lot of people are gonna say you know well why uh you know why malcolm x didn't say nothing sooner and malcolm x said that he felt that the nation of islam was you know positive the movement was initially positive uh, in regards to the reformation of the black man in America at that time and he didn't want you know for people to to, to, to leave it when it's giving them you know an alternative lifestyle allegedly that was more positive you know at that time it was known uh, among the Chicago officials that I had a knowledge of this they become very fearful of me they became very antagonistic toward me and they they had, they had to do something to diminish the authority that I had for fear that if this became public knowledge, the followers would leave the Muslim movement and follow me. And it was at that time that they used the statement that I made against President Kennedy as a pretext to cut my authority and uh, some other things happened that finally uh, produced the split or forced the split. And when I made the split, the only reason that I didn't make this public knowledge was I knew the implications and I, I felt that if the uh, Muslims who were in the uh, nation of Islam knew it, that which enabled them to be so strongly religious and uh, exercise moral discipline would be shattered and it would cause all of them to go right back and start doing the things that they had been doing previously. And so, uh, 
you know, Malcolm X goes on to then reconfirm uh, how he, you know, became aware of, you know, this incident involving Elijah Muhammad and uh, his pedophilic ways. And he also uh, goes on to tell the story of the six uh, girls that Elijah Muhammad, uh, you know, allegedly impregnated, which later on, you know, he will go on and say was nine. Who is the father of all of these various children whom you have enumerated? Uh, the first one to tell me who the father was was Wallace Muhammad. And he told me that the father was Elijah Muhammad himself. One of the sisters, took, uh, he went to the home of one of the sisters, and when he walked in the door, she said, I want to let you see something. And she uh, showed him her child. She said, here's your brother. And your father is the one, your father is the father of this child. And then I questioned the sisters myself because it, I was shook up. And they admitted to me that Elijah Muhammad was the father of their children. And I took it to him. And it was at that time he told me that he was Muhammad, the prophet. And that Muhammad had nine wives. He also told me that he was David. He was the modern David. And that he, that he was the modern Solomon. And that he, he was meant, it was meant for him to fulfill today all of the things that they did back then. And how many of these illegitimate children did he father with the sisters? Well, he made uh, six sisters pregnant they all had children two of those six had two children uh, uh one of those two is having a child right now i am told that there is a seventh sister who is supposed to be in mexico right now and she's supposed to be having a child by him. and so malcolm x made a critical point about you know uh elijah muhammad if he tried to justify it, saying that they was his wives but the nation of Islam had, you know, like their own little personal law where they was basically saying if you had sex or, you know, children out of wedlock or, you know, without being married to your husband, you know, you can get, you know, publicly reprimanded within the group and shamed and embarrassed. And so Malcolm X was basically saying, you know, if Elijah Muhammad took these women on as his wives, you know, or, or if he really honestly felt in, in his heart that they was his wives as he tried to use the religious rhetoric to justify his actions, then why did he allow these young girls to be publicly shamed and outcasted, you know, and embarrassed and humiliated and drugged through the mud for being underage having babies by the, you know, nation of Islam? Justified by saying that he's a Muslim, a Muslim, and that a Muslim has a right to these wives. If this were the case, he, these sisters should not have been humiliated. These sisters have been looked upon for the past uh, five years or six years or seven years as uh, being guilty of having committed uh, fornication. They have been debased. They have been degraded. I have heard he, I have heard him, himself, refer to them as having disgraced him. So if they were his wives, he should have given them a position of respect so that all of his followers would re respect them and that they would have his, have the protection of his followers today. The Nation of Islam had um, plenty of uh, propaganda, kind of like what Hitler did to the Jews. Uh, you know, they just built it up and built it up until they influenced the country to psychologically agree with their, you know, alleged, I mean, excuse me, with their attempted, you know, violent acts on the Jews. And so this is what the Nation of Islam did. You know, they had newspapers in their final call of Malcolm X's head bouncing up the street. Um, they called and referred to Malcolm X as, uh, you know, trying to, let's say, take over the Nation of Islam, which Malcolm X himself you know, already clearly stated that that was something that he was never trying to do. Well, do you feel that you then, perhaps, now should take over the leadership of the black Muslims? No, I have no desire to take over the leadership of the black Muslims, and I have never had that desire. Are you not, perhaps, afraid of what might happen to you as a result of making these revelations? Oh, yes. I probably am a dead man already. And so, outside of all of the uh, negative propaganda the Nation of Islam was putting out, Malcolm X stated that uh, he pretty much knew he was a dead man and that there was attempts on his life due to him speaking on the Nation of Islam in regards to such a, su a sensitive subject matter, you know, or topic in the public eye. So you got the Nation of Islam at this time, they're supposed to be so high, mighty, and righteous, and the white man's supposed to be so weak and wicked, etc. But then you got somebody like Elijah Muhammad who has over six underage, you know, girls pregnant. So that would have literally crumbled the Nation of Islam, not just internally, but externally because criminal charges could have been brought up. And so Malcolm X stated that he knew, uh, he knew the seriousness of what he was, uh, you know, bringing to the attention of the community.
And on top of knowing the seriousness, uh, he says that multiple attempts uh, were made on his life by other members of the Nation of Islam. Um, Have you received threats on your life? Oh, yes. Uh, I first received threats on my life in December. Or rather, no, yes, in December. No, not in December, in January. When I, uh, when it first became known that I had uh, came back to come back to New York and told the captain of the fruit in New York, who was my right-hand man, formerly. All right, take a listen again. And so on top of that, uh, Malcolm X also stated that, you know, orders are not given to the Nation of Islam for the Nation of Islam and children literally in harm's way in harm's way and so I can only under, I can only imagine the pain in the level of betrayal and the level of letdown that Malcolm X felt by the nation of Islam and uh, the nation of Islam is, is, is so barbaric and savage you know in their pursuit to cover up and defend the pedophile that they was willing to burn Malcolm, Malcolm X's house down with his women and his children inside in order to defend someone who chose to have sex with and impregnate underage girls. So this shows you the level of uh, devilishment that Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam is willing to carry out in order to uphold evil. And there's no other way around that. Uh, but given all of the evidence that we have so far and the agenda and the motive, right? I have no doubt in my mind that the Nation of Islam, if not killed Malcolm X, was involved in the murder of Malcolm X. Uh, here's a 1972 audio clip of Louis Farrakhan uh, boasting uh, about the death of Malcolm X. You know some people give the divine mercy of God like he did? He asked to die. And God obliged to die. Now he don't understand. Like some of the Justify the death of Malcolm X, calling him a traitor. Yeah, I love Elijah Muhammad enough that if you attack him, I kill you. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And I'm not a killer, but neither are you. But if somebody attack what you love, each one of you in here would become a killer instantaneously. Am I lying? Mother let somebody look like they're attacking your child. There's a woman who fought a bear because the bear snatched her baby. And she ran the bear down screaming until the bear dropped her baby. Love cast out fear. We don't give a damn about no white man law when you attack what we love. And frankly, it ain't none of your business. What 
What have you got to say about it? Did you teach Malcolm? Did you make Malcolm? Did you clean up Malcolm? Did you put Malcolm out before the world? Was Malcolm your traitor or was he ours? And if we dealt with him like a nation deals with a traitor, what the hell business is it of yours? You can shut your mouth and stay out of it. Because in the future, we're going to become a nation. And the nation got to be able to deal with traitors and cutthroats and turncoats. The white man does, deals with his. Uh, all right. I'm going to get back to that the next time. I'm going to move on. What I need you all to do is to go to YouTube and type in, right? Let me see. Didn't I just have it up here a while ago? Give me a hot minute. Uh, history. History. Didn't I say history? Bear with me a hot minute. Go back. History. History. You know what? Let me type it in here. What didn't you? Okay, true. Try that again. All right. You've got, when you go to YouTube, you've got Young Pharaoh Islam, the Quran, Ben X, and Farrakhan Exposed. Young, Young Pharaoh versus Riza, Riza Islam, NOI debate, Malcolm X, Farrakhan. Young Pharaoh, Louis Farrakhan admit to killing Malcolm X. Uh, Young Pharaoh wrote a letter. Young Pharaoh, Farrakhan wrote a letter to judge condemning Khalid Muhammad. Young Pharaoh speaks on Louis Farrakhan being banned from Instagram. Young Pharaoh and General Sarasu said he's Louis Farrakhan NOI sold out to the cult. This is Louis Farrakhan response. No, da, da, da. let's go. Young Pharaoh goes in on Louis Farrakhan for trying to flex on somebody. Flex on somebody. Young Pharaoh wrote Louis Farrakhan and Scientology. So if you notice, Pharaoh Allah for the last few months has been getting into the nation, of Islam, especially Farrakhan. So go over there. When you get an opportunity, go put in Young Pharaoh, all right, and just put Farrakhan. And you will hear the things that Nadi be saying. And especially Young Pharaoh wrote Louis Farrakhan under Scientology. He goes off. All right? Anyway, let's do this. Let's go back. It's 11.33. Let me do this real quick. And ta-da. Ah, yes. Oh, I just remember. Can't do that. I just remember. I can't play those kind of things. Because I'm doing something live on Facebook. And Facebook will say, you have not no permission, copyright, and they will mute it. So let's get that out of the mix and let's, but we can do, what we can do is this. Where are we? Come step to me. Number one, number two, just do it something like this.
Ah uh, yes, um, before that was Shabba Ranks and Skylarkin going on the wheels of fields number two and we're going over to Rusty Mac, the old WD-40, old Rusty Iron. Take a listen. Time it is.
I didn't listen. I said, I want time. I said to my mama, I don't want to work. What do I want to work for? That's work is for. Work. You know what? I work. And I remember arguing about working and saying, I don't need to work. There's other things I can do to make money that I don't need to work. And sometimes I, do, I make some good money. I, I won't lie. The things I did, I did make some money, some good money, but the money don't last. You get a lot of money at one time and then it go. Easy money is dangerous money. Easy money get you killed. I've seen it. Some of my friends are in cemeteries now. Some of them in prisons now because of easy money. Easy money ain't good money. The money you gotta work for is the good money. And you know what? My cousin got house now. And all his friends have got houses. I got a car. I got a nice crisp BMW and that's it. That's all I got. I ain't got nothing else to show. Nothing. I got a nice watch. I got a nice watch. Real, this ain't no fake fake business. Proper watch this, you know. That's it. That is it. I got six children. I don't know none of them. I don't know none of my own children. I don't even remember all their names. I'm not, sh I, man, you think, you think I'm bossy bossy here? It's ain't no boss, this is shame talking. I did reason hard with my cousin last night and this is shame talking, cause I am in a trap. I fall into the trap, yeah? This, this casual sex trap that our culture seems to live by. The amount of time I've been christening and partying, I've seen our women come in with their picnic and no man, no man to be seen. No man, I only got two, I only know two of my girl cousins who have got husbands. All the rest of them, all of them got children, but no man. I've never seen them come to any party with a man, but I've always seen them come with children. What's that all about? It's about a man like me. If I'm being honest, I'm being honest here now, it's about a man like me who ain't being there for their children. Just breeding up women left, right and centre and then going about our business. And, and now look what's happening. Our children on the street killing up each other. Every day someone's getting stabbed. Every day. Yes, violence was there when I was younger. But it wasn't like this. It wasn't murder every single day. A man might get wet up, might get a slash across his chin or something like that. But not stabbed to death every day. And these boys are angry. I know they're angry because I was one of them. Because I was angry because I didn't have a dad. Because my dad... And you know what, I ain't gonna swear, because I'm putting this out there, I want people to see this. But my dad, up, you know? I used to dream about seeing my dad. I used to dream, lie in my bed, dreaming about it. Him coming to take me to play football. He, he promised, yeah, yeah, your dad, your, your dad promised he'd come, but he ain't gonna turn up. No, I used to say to my mum, be quiet, man. Of course my dad will turn up, and I'd wait for him, and I'd wait for him, and I'd wait for him, and you know something, may never turn up. But I give my dad a chance. And for years I give my dad another chance. And one day he did turn up. And he took me McDonald's. And we talk. And then I didn't see him again. And then the next time I saw him I was like 15. And you know what? I just looked at him and he looked at me. And, and, and he, he, he kind of questioned if I was his son. He said, you know something? I was never actually sure if you might pick me. Man. Uh, when he said that to me. I had to go outside. I had to go outside because I wanted to kill him right there. And then I had to go outside and I cried. I won't lie to you, I cried. And from that moment on, you could not control me. I didn't care about nobody. I was out on the street after that. I was mugging people. I was selling this, that. I was beating man down. Because I didn't care anymore. I had nobody. My mom couldn't control me no more. I was growing too big for her too mouthy, she couldn't control me, she tried, my mum tried hard to raise us properly, but after that, when my dad said that to me, that was it, I was gone, Look in here, you know, I was gone, I didn't care who I heard, I didn't care, as my cousin, his, his dad was teaching him about apprenticeship and scholarship and all this ship and that ship, yeah, no one there is teaching that. I don't teaching my my son probably better out there teaching him drug ship and mug ship. That's the only ship him learning. And it's my fault. And it's other men like me 
all my friends, I got five friends. I compare with my cousin's five friends. Five friends, you know how much picnic we got? One of them got eight. One and one of them got eight. One of them got five. One got three. What's that? Eight and eight, sixteen. Seventeen, eighteen, nine, twenty, twenty-one, three, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. I got four. So five is twenty-seven. What's that? That's over top of the tree. That's four of us. Twenty-seven. Thirty-two children. Five of my friends. We got thirty-two children between us. And none of my friends is always with their children. None of them. None of them. I don't see none of them with them children all the time. You got a party, you meet a girl, you beat her up. You got a party, you meet a girl, you beat her up. You got a party, you meet a girl, you beat her up. You got a party, you meet a man, you beat, he beat you up. What kind? How's that? What kind of culture? You know what my cousin showed me? He showed me this is slavery's business. And I said, man, don't chat to me about slavery business. But it is. When he break it down, you see it. On this plantation, the master used to move the men around between the women. You know? To breed them up. So the woman could raise the children alone. And then break the man. And then break the man in front of the woman. In front of the children so she can learn not to disobey the master. And then the strongest man they put with women so they can have good sleep. They treated us like we was animals on a farm. My cousin showed me this. And you know what? We're still doing it. Psychologically, we're still doing that. Ish. Even today. It's still going on. You see Chinese man do that? Indian man? You think Indian man go to a dance and meet some girl and then get her pregnant? Or Chinese man go dance, meet some girl, get her pregnant? No. Their families will come together and they meet a girl and they get married and the families join together and they reach raise the children in a family. Listen to me talking. I know this is like we are hypocrite. I'm not a hypocrite. I'm just oh my eyes are just opened. My eyes are open to it. My cousin opened my eyes. When someone is lying on the in their deathbed, your own flesh and blood, you kind of start thinking fat things about your own life and how you how you run your life and how what you've done in your life has affected the life of your children and how what I've done in my life the negativity of my life the negativity of my friend the negativity of what I do has affected my son in a negative way and the positivity of my uncle and the positivity of what he does and the positivity of what my uncle told his son has affected him in a positive way and all my cousin's friends who are lawyers and engineers and economists their fathers, their mothers, their families have affected them in a positive way because they spoke to them positively and they stayed family. Us with Indians, we got this thing about having children. How many of us have got dads and moms who've got children still in the West Indies from different men and different women? How many of us? And it's because it comes from the the slavery, that's what my cousin showed me. It comes from the slavery and even though we ain't slaves no more, in here, in here. In here, all this book about lightning skin, straightening here, hating ourselves, fighting ourselves, killing ourselves. When my parents came and they didn't kill themselves, they had to stick together because the white people, the, the, and the white people, the racism, they would beat them up. So they stuck together. But the racism was kind of gone away like it, how it was, the skinheads and all that business. So now what's happened? We're turning on ourselves. Poverty as well. Poverty is a hard thing. But you can get out of poverty. You get out of poverty with the right mentality. Yeah, I sound like I'm some kind of teacher, but I'm not. My eyes are opened. My son is lying there stabbed. And when that happens, you have to start thinking about your life. And you start looking at your life. And I start looking deeply at us, at our culture. And our culture is up. When you got constantly got women, with no, with children and no fathers, our culture is up, effed up. People like me, you ain't seen their stuff for like 10, 12 years. What kind of ball is that, man? You know, so when I finish it, I'm going to the hospital. I don't care what his mother says, I'm going to go see my son. And I'm going to be a father. For the first time in my life, I'm going to be responsible for my children. Not just him, all the rest of them. I'm not just saying this. I don't want any more of them in the hospital. He survived. Thank God he survived and he's alive. You know, I didn't even know I care for my own boy, but I do. I care for my own boy. I thank God he's alive. And I don't want my daughters repeating their mother's mistakes and getting pregnant. Getting 
getting pregnant from some one night stand, two night stand. I don't want that for them either. I'm gonna talk to them. I'm gonna talk to them. I'm gonna go see my son. I don't care what his mother says. I'm gonna go see my son and I'm gonna tell him I love him because I do. And I don't want him to be like me. I want him to have a chance. And, and maybe this is the eye opener for me. For me. To stop the stupidness. To stop when my cousin used to tell me about why am I building spliff in front of my children. I tell him to shut up. What does don't be stupid? Building spliff in front of a two year old. My uncle never build no spliff in front of me. I don't even know if my uncle smokes. My uncle never showed me negativity. He only ever spoke and showed me positive things. And the only thing I and my friends have ever showed our children is negativity. Being in spirit, talking about glorifying, being a thief. Comparing notes with your children about who you rob, who you meet in prison. What kind of f is that, man? What kind of reason is that? Bull! No more. We gotta stop this, man. We gotta grow up. All of us, grow up. Stop hating each other. Come together. Be a family. Raise the children. I've gone to the hospital. I'm going to see my boy. Thank you. Please. One second. I yield. Whoa, whoa. whoa. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm coming your way. As soon as I finish, I'm coming your way. But I thought it was important that I talk to you because you're an old girl on the street and you know what's going on with the young people. No, but I, when I leave the studio at 12 o'clock, I'm coming over to where you at. So that will be you. You'll be there before I reach. different about young people. And you're no, no, no. Hopefully, outside it's raining, so I'm not trying to walk that coming. Because remember, I'm coming from the studio, coming down by you. You're so you should be the there street. within the next 10 minutes. That's five street. minutes, what, seven minutes too. Right? All right then, so, so, so I see I'm, you in a half minute. I'm the, I'm the man that I'm, I'm the, I'm the man uh. come to. I'll just be on road. I'll just be on road for fam. So you get the... Uh, so All right, how long? All right, I'll be here so waiting for you. Fam. All it takes is a bit of encouragement, you get me? No, All right, no, no problem. No All right then, thanks. Job, fam. You get me? When I sold him this, Get me? Like, that's all it takes, man. How long does it take to make that come A couple out? days, my G. Couple days. A man of us slaving away from his off paycheck when they can get this in a couple days, man. Think about it, right? Yeah, but so, but, but, but the young people see money, yeah, uh, and, they, and and I guess you guys kind of glamorize that money. Of course, he grabs it. We glamorize it because you get it. Man gets dough out here. You get me? So where do the young people fit into all of this? They just eat. They're easy targets, fam. You get me? They're easy targets. They don't want to be on. They don't want to be working no job, fam. In debt from uni and everything. Oh, man, just encourage them. There's easy pee to be made out here. Push, push, push some packs. You get me? Push some food for man. And man, get that dough. Simple. It's not rocket science, magic. So the young people coming up now, I've got to look out for people like you. Not necessarily, because I look out for them. Alright. I target them. If I see a man is if I see a man is an e easy target, man is targeting him because I know he's gonna get his pee for me. And I know that he wants pee. But what's an easy target? You understand? Are you talking about any child? Right. No, no, no. You gotta look at you gotta look at the ends. You gotta look at what youths are growing up in single parent households. You gotta look at what man's environment is. You get me? What man's parents are doing. Is my parents a crackhead? Is my parents on food? You get me? They're the easiest targets there because they're tainted. You get me? They've got no other option. You get me? Yeah, yeah. So they're the I'm easiest ones I'm hearing, what you're, I'm hearing what you're saying. So you're like, like, like you're making, vulnerable. No, you're making it like the way you're making it sound. Yeah. It's like it's a hard thing, fam. This ain't hard, you know. Any one of these youth passing, I can approach them, fam. Yeah, but what if they were. Right, so you're saying that you could approach any youth. What school age? School age specifically, my G. Specifically, like the early, the early teen ages is the best way to the best age to catch them, fam. Uh -huh. When they in school, you what? You think you think you think man putting on his uniform in the morning and saying, "Yeah, bye, I'm going to school." Nah, fam. He's coming to me and he's putting his tracksuit on and he's pedaling on the road, fam. 
met me. Then he's going home after school. He's saying, yeah, mama, have a good day at school. Get me? So, or on the flip side now, you've got the mums that want to question man for not working. Oh, God. So on the flip side now, you've got the, you the mums questioning their youths why they're not working. Where's my rent? Where's this? Where's that? If he's just dashing a little, a little five bills on the table, you think she's asking questions? You think she's going to say, oh, where'd you get that money from? She don't care. She's got her five bills. She's nice. Get me? This is the real. This is the reality of the road, fam. So the reality of the road is that some of the parents know all their children. Of course they do. Come on, come on. When you think all these youths on the road, you think their parents don't? You think, think some of their parents don't know? They know what they're doing. They know the consequences. You get me? But if they. But what about you? What you've been on the road so long. What about you and your family? Do you have any what children? What about me and my family? I've got youths. Man, look after my youths. Nice, because I get this pee, fam. So what happens if, if somebody tried to use your child? <laughs> that, ain't gonna, that will never happen, fam. Never. You see this? Trust me, fam. It's not going to happen. No knives involved. This is going to happen. You me? That's what's going to happen. You think, this, you think this is all... You think this is la-la land? <laughs> <laughs> this is real issue, you know? I hear what I'm here. It's time of time of morning for me to call it a rid up and break out and leave it in the capable hands of the one and only rules doctor will take you to the hours of four o'clock. As for myself, I gotta hit the brick, gotta hit the block because I got things to do. But let me leave you like this. Peace to the gods and goddesses in around the capital. I leave you in the name of the Moosai, whoever or whatever you call the Moosai. I leave you the universal language of the words of peace. Peace, you'll remain safe till I catch you on the rebound. The Moosai willing will be tomorrow morning. I hope God guides you and your family and everything you do. I also hope and pray that you continue to grow intellectually so that you and I can see where we fit into this world picture. So that you and I can make a change for our use of weight, the gun, the knife, the drugs, and the gang culture. And to my sons and sons, Eds, I don't call you sons and sons because you're mine. I call you sons and sons because each and every one of you is shy. And we don't want to lose those two shining stars. We don't want society to say they've taken two children with one bullet, whether it be in a penile system, a quadriplegic in the hospital, or somebody blowing you out of the frame when you're pushing days from the grave. We don't want none of that. Right? Right. So remember, Yesterday is history, tomorrow is the future, today is the present. So treat today as a gift because tomorrow is not guaranteed to each and every one of us. Do not, I repeat, do not let your emotions supersede your intelligence. Whatever you do this morning, this afternoon, this evening or tonight, what do you do? You think before you think, before you think. Let the information swirl around in the cranium for a hot minute and then you make a decision and trust me, it will be the right decision. Thanks for giving me your listening ears for the last four hours. Thanks for the one thing as one Texas. They, they have a saying, each one teach one. They got another saying, you see knowledge from the cradle to the grave and they got another saying. If you can't be good, be careful. You know what I say, if you can't be good, stay in your house and be a pest to yourself. Do like what I do. And on that note, y'all take care, have a good one. Do the right thing. I'm going to call it a rid up, break out because I got to hit the block because I got things to do. All right? But you hear what I'm saying? Please take the mes message. All right? Let it swirl around and then hopefully you and I can make a change. All right? And on that note, Take care. I'm through the door. Peace. One. I'm out. Conservative MPs will start the process of choosing their new leader and the next Prime Minister this morning. The first round of votes by a secret ballot is taking place in the Commons.